Okay, lesson nine. How do I identify the basic ratio and equivalent ratios using a ratio table? So we're going to continue to look at ratio tables, but we're also going to see how they can show us the equivalent ratio and the basic ratio and what, what that looks like. If you look at uh, workbook page 25, you're going to see three different ratio tables, and we're going to fill them in according to different situations. We're also going to, of course, label our columns. We're going to skip around a little bit. I actually want to start with number two. Two bands march onto the football field. Band one marches on in rows of five, and band two marches on in rows of seven. So I'm going to label my columns B1 for band two, I'm sorry, band one, and B2 for band two. And it looks like um, band one marches on in rows of five. So I know band one is going to start at five, uh, five people in a row, and band two will have seven people in a row. So this column right here, this unit column, is going to show me the number of rows. I don't know if you noticed, this is actually a linked rate table. It's a linked rate table because it has that extra column that shows the linking unit. That's right, the linking unit is the rows. It's that hidden column that you don't usually see in a ratio table that talks about the unit that links the two other columns together, in this case, rows. So let's say row two starts. Now we have another five people out on the field from band one, bringing it up to 10 and another seven people out on the field from band two, bringing it up to 14. Now the third row comes along. Now we're up to 15 band one members, and we're up to 21 band two members. So obviously band one is increasing by fives every row. Uh, band two is increasing by sevens every row. So at the very top, I'm gonna put the original ratio, the ratio of people from band one to band two, and that is going to be five to seven. Later, you're going to learn that we call this the basic ratio. Let's look at um, number one now. Noreen makes two drawings on each page of her sketchbook. Tim makes five drawings on each page of his sketchbook. So we're back to our friends Noreen and Tim. So I'm going to use N and T. And let's see, when Noreen has two drawings, uh, Tim has five. And this is per page. So when it comes time to the second page, now Noreen will have four and Tim will have uh, ten drawings. Third page comes along. Now Noreen has six drawings and Tim has 15. And obviously, each time with each page, the number of drawings are going to increase. For Noreen, each page is going to increase by two drawings, and for Tim, they're going to increase by five drawings. So we have, uh, let's see, 20, 25, and 30, okay? Now the linking unit here would be pages. That means if I were to have an extra column here, this would probably be labeled pages, because on the first page, Tim and Noreen have two and five. By the second page, Noreen would have four and Tim would have 10. By the third page, Noreen would have six drawings, Tim would have 15, and so on and so forth. So the linking unit here is pages. And the basic ratio is two to five. For every two drawings that Noreen does, Tim has five. And the last ratio table, ratio table three, John can plant seven tomato vines in the time it takes Joanna to plant four tomato vines. So let's do J for John and J-O-A for Joanna. And John plants seven tomato vines in the time it takes Joanna to plant four. So that means when John has 14 tomato vines, Joanna will have eight. When Joanna has 12 tomato vines, uh, John will have planted 21. And obviously, John's is increasing by seven every single time, and Joanna's is increasing by four every single time. Now, the linking unit here is a little bit tricky. What unit is connecting them? It says John can plant seven tomato vines in the time 
it takes Joanna to plant four tomato vines. Well, what is that time? The thing is, we don't really know. We just know it's an amount of time. So maybe it's an hour. Maybe in an hour, John can plant seven and Joanna can plant four. Or maybe it's in days. Maybe, you know, in so many, in, in three days, you know, Joanna can plant 12 tomato vines and uh, John will have 21. So we don't really know what the amount of time is. We just know that time is the linking unit. And of course, the basic ratio where it all starts is 7 to 4. Now, number seven on workbook page 26, it gives you a couple, well, a couple tables, and you have to figure out which ones are ratio tables, and we have to figure out why. And then we get to be creative and tell some ratio stories um, about the ratio tables only. And we'll come up with what the linking unit is and some labels for the stories that we create. So I'm only showing you A and B. If you look carefully, you can see that A is actually a ratio table because you are increasing each time on the left side by four and on the right side each time we're increasing it by seven. So we have a constant ratio of four to seven. Every time we're increasing the left side by four, the right side by seven. So four to seven. Um, if I were to come up with a story to go along with this, because it's a ratio table, I can do that. Maybe I'll do the story of, um, I don't know, I bring in four pencils every day and seven erasers every day. So on the first day, I have four pencils and seven erasers brought in. By the second day, I'm now up to eight pencils and 14 erasers. By the third day, well, I will have brought in 12 pencils and 21 erasers and so on and so forth. So... My linking unit with my story, oops, there we go. My linking unit would actually be days because I'm talking about how many pencils and how many erasers I bring in each day. Now looking at B, B on the other hand is actually not a ratio table. If you look carefully, you can see, yeah, the first column is increasing by three, but the second column is not increasing by five. The first time you're increasing by seven, then you're increasing by six, then you increase by two. That is what causes this not to be a ratio table. You do not have a constant ratio of three to five. You should be increasing by three every time on the left side and increasing by five every time on the right side. And that's not the case here. Okay, now let's look at workbook page uh, 26, but the bottom. So a basic ratio has the least possible whole numbers, like 4 to 7. 4 to 7 is a basic ratio because no whole number, except for 1, divides evenly into 4 and 7. So 4 to 7 is the basic ratio because essentially it's simplified, right? You can't simplify 4 to 7 any further. Equivalent ratios are made up of multiples of the basic ratio row. Equivalent ratios are written as 8 to 14 equals 20 to 35, or 8 to 14, then you can use this double colon here, that also means equals um, 20 to 35. So if you have a ratio table, all of the rows in that ratio table are going to be equivalent to each other. They're all going to be the same as the basic ratio. For example, look at 8 to 14. If I were to simplify 8 to 14, I would get 4 to 7. What if I did um, 16 to 28? So if I were to simplify 16 to 28, that gives me... 4 to 7. So every time, all of these ratios, they're all going to be the same as one another because they all simplify to 4 to 7. That means when I list out all my, you know, equivalent ratios, I could pick any of those rows. It doesn't matter. Maybe I'll do 8 to 14 is equivalent to 16 to 28. Maybe I'll do uh, 4 to 7 
is equivalent to 32 to 56. Maybe I'll do 28 to 49 is, I'll do that double colon, is equivalent to 24 to 42. Uh, maybe I'll do 12 to 21 is equivalent to 20 to 35. It really doesn't matter what rows I look at. All of these rows are equivalent to each other. They're all going to simplify back to that basic ratio of 4 to 7. Now, if you look at B, on the other hand, uh, table B, we actually do not have equivalent ratios, and I'll prove it to you. Our first ratio here is 3 to 5. Let's look at another ratio. How about 6 to 12? If I simplify that, I'm actually going to get 1 to 2. Well, that's not the same as 3 to 5. What about another one? What if I took uh, 9 to 18 here? Let's see. 9 to 18, well, if I were to simplify that, there's that 1 to 2 again, but it's still not the same as that first ratio. I do not have equivalent ratios here, meaning this is not a ratio table, and I can't fill in this part because I don't have equivalent ratios. Oops, wrong page. Okay, so our takeaways. Um, first, the basic ratio. Well, that's a ratio in simplest form. You can't simplify it any further. Equivalent ratios are ratios that represent the same comparison. So, for example, 4 to 7 for the pencils to erasers, well, that's the same as 8 to 14. They're equivalent ratios. It's still a ratio of 4 pencils to 7 erasers. No matter what day, I'm still bringing in 4 pencils and 7 erasers. Um, and a ratio table has, a, has the basic ratio at the top, the rest of the rows, are going to show your equivalent ratios.